We've all heard of a lot of different kinds of EM technology and it can get a little overwhelming trying to figure out which one is the best one for your use. So we've developed this picture here to try to help you. On the horizontal axis is how general your geometry is. And on the left you see something called 2D, which is actually the cross section of a transmission line. And way on the right is 3D, which is a general arbitrary 3D structure. Vertically is the computation time. Uh, I'm sure you're not surprised that the more general the structure, the longer it takes to solve. And what I'd like to do is just run through these three different bubbles here and give you some idea of the types of tools out there. If we start at the left with cross-sectional solvers, what they are used for is actually solving transmission lines of various kinds. And these are built right into our software and built-in models. Here you actually see two coupled lines in layered dielectric. And what we are doing is we're using EM in various ways to solve for the transmission line parameters. Uh, these run extremely fast and you can use them interactively. I have other videos on these so I'm not going to talk any more about them here. The middle bubble is the very popular class of simulators called moment method simulators. And these can do quite large circuits. The 3D planar means that it's horizontal layers of dielectric with metal on them and then the 3D part of that means you can do vertical current. So think vias and thick metal. The way these work is you mesh up the metal and then you're going to solve for the currents on the metal. We have two uh, built-in 3D planar simulators, Axiom and EMSite, and we also support Sonnet and Zeeland Software's IE3D through our socket. The way they basically work is you mesh up the metal, in this case with rectangles and triangles and axiom, and the current is approximated on each rectangle in a very simple way, and then we solve for the currents to get the S parameters. Now the way they talk to each other is through something called the Green's function, and the Green's function uh, is pre-calculated so it knows how everything talks to each other and knows all about the dielectric layers, the ground plane, etc. And this is why they're uh, fairly efficient. In EM site, which we see here, we actually start out with a uniform mesh. You can see our bend is 2 by 2 mil uniform mesh. And out of that we can build a non-uniform mesh so that we have fewer meshes and the problem runs faster. The reason it has to be uniform is because we use the FFT method. And as a result of the uniform mesh and the FFT method, EM site is also in a box. Uh, Sonnet behaves similarly. Axiom is not in a box and we don't use a uniform mesh. And you can see here we have rectangles and triangles. Again, you would solve for all the currents talking to each other and thereby get the S parameters. But again, the big difference here from EM site is there is no box. So for example, we can look at radiation. I did mention the vertical currents. On the right you can see EM site with a simple via, rectangular via, and you can see uh, there would be vertical currents going up and down. Axiom is a little bit more general. You see a vertical sidewall on this spiral inductor, and we actually can look at both vertical and horizontal currents on the vertical wall. And uh, this is very important for things like in, uh, spiral inductors to get the right answer. The final group of simulators, the 3D methods, are the most general. The most popular are the finite element method and the finite difference uh, time domain method, typically used for things like uh, waveguides and uh, simple uh, structures like bond wires, BGA balls, etc. You can see here that uh, we've meshed up this waveguide filter. And notice that all of space is meshed up, the interior of the waveguide. We're not meshing the metal. This is why they're so computationally intensive, but also why they're so general. There's no restriction on the dielectric layers, etc. Uh, over here on the upper right, show you a couple more structures. This is actually a section of a particle accelerator. And then I also have a patch antenna radiating outward. And those boundary conditions there are radiation boundary conditions. On the lower right, we have a, another type of filter. Notice the different colors. This is actually different processors processing different parts of the geometry. 
And this is the way we're headed uh, with our software in which you actually uh, can use multiple processors, multiple computers to speed things up. Well, I hope this brief video has given you some idea of the different uh, solvers out there and a simple way to classify them. If you have further questions and interest, please go to our website at awrcorp.com or give us a call. Thanks a lot and have a great day.